Hello. In this video lesson, we're going to be working through a pack of exam questions on nuclear physics, which would be the first part of uh, topic P4 AQA GCSE physics. To complete this lesson, you will need your answers to the, ex to the question pack and a green pen. So stop the video and get yourself sorted. If you didn't manage to do these questions last week, don't worry because the question is going to be in front of you. And what I'm going to do is talk through how to answer them as well as what the answers are going to be. We're going to start with question one. So it's really important that you know what this nuclear symbol here is telling you and what this word isotope means. So the idea of an isotope is it's um, atoms of the same element with the same atomic number but different mass numbers. And so when we look at this question, it asks you which of the isotopes given in the table below is not an isotope of americinium. So if we go up here, americinium has got an, an atomic number of 95. So if we go to our table, only isotope B, this one here, has a different atomic number and therefore cannot be an isotope. So our answer is B but you're asked to give a written reason for that. So it's important to get your words right. So we've gone straight in by making sure we've told the examiner that we know isotopes must have the same atomic number. There's that critical phrase there. And americinium has an atomic number of 95. Therefore, B cannot be an isotope as its atomic number is 92. So two marks, one for saying what an isotope is, and one doing the specifics about americinium. Now the next one, um, half-life graphs are always going to come up. So if we look at a half-life, remember to look at it very carefully. We've got count rate in seconds on our y-axis here, and then we've got a time axis across the bottom. And so our question is about looking at the samples. So what does it ask us to do? What is the half-life of americinium-241? So if we go up here, we've started with a count of 1,000. So half of that is 500. We draw our line across to the graph to hit the curve and our line down to hit that time scale. Now, the examiner wants to see that you've drawn those lines because they can give you marks if you're a little bit out on your timing as long as it matches your lines. So if we look at our bottom scale here, it is basically um, between your 4,000 and 5,000. Each of my little squares there is worth 200. So your answer should be, oh, there's a naught missing off the end there. Let's put that naught on there. Our answer should be 4,400 million years. Now, without that million, you haven't given the right answer because you haven't read the time scale correctly because that is 4,400 million years. This next one was quite easy, so we'll just go straight to it. particles in the nucleus of an atom and neutrons and protons. Your chemistry should remind you that electrons are in shells and not in the nucleus. Chemistry should help you here as well when we're adding charges to atomic particles, electrons minus one, neutrons zero, proton plus one. Now this question is actually harder than it looks. A neutral atom has no overall charge. Explain this in terms of its particles. Now you need to understand that they need you to identify number of particles and the charge on the particle. So they have to have the same number of protons and electrons, which mean they have the same amount of positive and negative charge, which cancel out. You'll notice I've used same number of my subatomic particles, same amount of charge, but opposite charges that cancel out. You can't expect to get two marks if you don't mention both points. A little bit more of your physics chemistry crossover here. If an atom loses an electron, well, any atom that loses an electron will be called an ion. It will be called an ion if it gains an electron, but it can no longer be called an atom. And in this case, if it loses an electron because electrons are negative, the remaining particle is going to have a positive charge. 
because the protons and electrons no longer cancel out. There's going to be one more proton in that nucleus than an electron around the outside, which is why it's got a positive charge on it. Question three. Quite a few of you didn't quite understand what this question was asking you. So we've got a statement about alpha particles that's incorrect and you had to change it. Two possible answers, both equally correct. Alpha particles cannot pass through a very thin sheet of lead. Or if you wanted the first part of that sentence to be correct, then the very last word on that sentence needed to be changed to paper. So alpha particles cannot pass through a thin, very thin sheet of lead or alpha particles can pass through a very thin sheet of paper. So read your question, read your answer, make sure you got the right thing. Oh, look, here's another one of those half-life curves again. But this time the question was very, very definite. Draw on the graph to show that it can be used to find the half-life. So this number down here wouldn't get you a mark. The red lines on the graph is what gets you the mark. All right, so it's really important. And so some of you lost that mark because you didn't draw on the graph. And then it asks you apply that information. So we found out that the half-life of this uranium isotope is four and a half million years, four and a, try to get four and a half thousand million years. And then it goes on to say there is now half as much um, uranium in rocks as there were when the Earth was formed. So it's gone through a half-life. So it's four and a half thousand million years old. You had to think about this next question carefully. If a sample of uranium-238 were available, it would not be possible to measure the half-life in a school. Remember, the half-life is four and a half thousand million years. Answer was very simple. Half-life is too long, and so we would not be able to measure the change in count rate over a long enough period of time. Not one of us could sit there with a stopwatch and wait for four and a half thousand million years to pass by to find its half-life. So logic, very clear. Question four, don't need to explain this one. This is either you know or you don't. Alpha particles, proton, two protons, two neutrons, beta particle is an electron. And then that weird gamma radiation isn't particle at all, it's a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This question, very easy for students, and lots of you did, to miss this one out because you see a picture and then you go to find a question. But there was no space to write the question because the question says complete the figure above by writing the name of the correct radiation in each box. Now, I couldn't edit this one for some reason, so that top box should have read gamma then beta, then alpha. So if we just check that, gamma is the has got the most penetrating power, so it can go through paper, aluminium, and mainly lead. Beta in this next box here can only pass through paper, not through the aluminium, and then alpha can't even pass through paper. But if you didn't spot that it said complete the figure, you've just thrown two marks away on an exam. Really pleased with the way this question was answered by a lot of you. You obviously did your homework. You've looked it up. Two safety precautions. Don't handle the source. Use tongs instead. And don't point the sources at anybody because you don't want alpha or beta radiation um, directed to an individual because it can pass through their skin. Now, this one was tricky and it could, required a bit of logical thinking. So it says use the table to calculate the account rate after 200 seconds. So 40 seconds on from the table. Now, the thing you had to work out was the length of the half life. So if I look at 400 drops to 200 in 80 seconds. So the half life is 80 seconds long. And then if I look here at 120, 80 seconds on from that, is my 200 that the question is asking you about. So 80 seconds on from there would be another half-life. So all I needed to do was half that number there. 
So if the count is 141 at 120 seconds, 80 seconds later, which is a half-life, would give me half of 141, which is approximately 71 counts. Now, to get those two marks, the examiner expected you to have recognized that the half-life is 80 seconds and then applied that correctly to any of the numbers that were up here. Right, so it was really important that you could work that out. Now, when we're playing with radioactive samples in the lab, really important that it's got a half-life that's very short. You're asked to give one reason why it would make it less hazardous. Well, if you think about it, after 800 seconds, that's 10 half-lives would have elapsed in that time, which means the radioactive count after 800 seconds would be so low it wouldn't be detectable against background radiation. But they wanted you to understand that it would be very, very low after 80 or 800 seconds. Question five, we've got three diagrams. Really important to have looked at the key there. Anything with a positive charge is a proton. Just that circle there is a neutron and then electrons around the outside. So this one, we've got one proton and one neutron, one proton, two neutrons, two protons, two neutrons. Physicists aren't really interested in those electrons. So the question was, which two of the atoms are isotopes of the same element? Going back to right at the beginning of this question pack, an isotope must have the same proton number. And so the only two that could be is K and L. So hopefully we put K and L down. But then the question asked you to justify it, looking at the two different things. So this is what we want to, you to really focus in on. If they're atoms of the same element, they must have the same number of protons. But if they're isotopes of the same elements, they would have different numbers of neutrons. And so that's the phrase you've got to learn. Same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons. Uh, this one, just a, a matter of reminding yourself about atomic structure. If you've got an atomic number of 90, that's how many protons it's got. So it must have the same number of electrons. So that's 90 electrons. When it comes to neutrons, the version is it's mass number take away atomic number. So we get a lovely answer of 140 there. Now, looking at a radioactive decay equation, it's important that you remember there's only two you have to learn, alpha and beta. Now, if it's alpha decay, that mass number there decreases by four and the proton number decreases by two. So if we have a look at this, it's decreased by four, this one's decreased by two, so it's alpha. So my explanation, really short. Look at this, the examiner doesn't want you to write reams and reams, it just wants to, you to um, identify that you've recognized that the mass number is decreased by four and the atomic number is decreased by two. You don't have to explain why the mass number has gone down or why the atomic number has gone down, you just have to state your reasons for recognizing it as alpha. So just you know, two things there, one mark for alpha, one mark for saying mass number decreases by four, one number for saying, or one mark rather for saying atomic numbers decrease by two. Moving on, here we're describing the structure of an alpha particle. Now, just the structure, so what it's made from, not what it hasn't got, but what it's made from, so just two protons to plus two neutrons, two marks for each half of that question, right? Beta particle is an electron, but get used to calling it a fast moving electron. Now, when we have to describe how beta radiation is produced, it's really important that you remember that a neutron breaks down, releasing an electron and leaving behind a proton. So it's the breakdown of a neutron is that critical part there. Now, here we go. Atoms of isotope business 212 decay by emitting either alpha or beta. The equation represents what happens when an atom of bismuth decays by beta emission into a particle of polonium. So we can see here mass number has stayed the same. Proton number has gone up by one. 
So the business atom and polonium atom have the same mass number. What does that mean? Now, you've got to be really careful. It's this word in the middle here, this plus word. When you're asked a mass number, it's the total number of protons plus neutrons. If you write and, it is wrong. You must not use that. It's protons plus neutrons. Beta decay does not cause the mass number of an atom to change. Explain why not. Now, here, they don't want you to talk about an electron having no mass. They want you to emphasize that when beta decay happens, a neutron which has a mass of one breaks down, but it leaves behind a proton which also has a mass of one. So they want you to emphasize that the neutron has changed into a proton, but they have the same mass number. So your two marks there is to emphasize a neutron has a mass of one, but the proton left behind also has a mass of one. No marks there for mentioning electrons. So writing alpha decay equations. When an atom of bismuth emit, emits an alpha particle, the atom decays into an atom of thallium. An alpha particle is the same of a helium nucleus and so can be represented by this symbol here. And you simply had to complete the missing numbers. 212, take away 4 is 208. 83, take away 2 is 81. Very straightforward there, nice two marks. It's impossible for alpha decay of bismuth to produce the same element as beta decay. Again, you need to emphasize that atomic number change. Alpha decay changes the number by two, but beta decay increases number by, by one. Different atomic numbers mean different elements. Nice straightforward explanation there. So final question. When an atom of thorium-232 decays, an alpha particle is emitted from the nucleus and an atom of radium is left behind. An alpha particle consists of two protons, two neutrons. Thorium-228 is also radioactive. Atoms of this isotope also decay by emitting an alpha particle and producing an isotope of radium. So all you have to do is to complete the equation. So four marks available here. So mark number one, correct mass number. Mark number two, correct atomic number. Mark number three, correct symbol, which is RA. And then your final mark is for representing that alpha particle with its mass and atomic number. So four marks, one, two, three, and one for this whole thing here. Same applies to this next equation, but this time we are doing a beta decay. So mass number stays the same, 228. Proton number, atomic number goes up by one, which is 90. Now, what you'll notice is 90 is this element here. So we didn't need a periodic table to work it out. We just had to recognize that it changed back into thorium. So one mark for that, one mark for thorium, one mark for our 90, and then one mark for the whole beta particle. You have to have all three bits for that final mark. And then my final part of the question, following our zigzag down. So it's important to understand what's going on here. We've started off with thorium-232, which is this one up here, A, and it eventually decays down to lead, which is the 208 one, which is this one, K, down here. And we've got steps as we go down. And the question asks us, during the decay from A to B, what sort of particle? Now, we've gone from a proton number. So let's have a look down here. My proton number was 90, but B has gone down to 88. A change in proton number of minus 2 means it's an alpha decay. So my answer there is alpha. If I go from B to C, I've gone from 88 to 89. So I've increased my atomic number by one. So that must be beta decay. So we've written beta in here. If we find E and F on my diagram here, I've gone from 88 again down to 86, which is a drop of two. So that must be alpha decay. Here we go. And then finally, we've got A to J. We've gone from 83 back up to 84. An increase in one makes it beta decay. 
So I hope you've been um, working through these questions with me. If you had your questions by the side of you, you could be GPAing them. And so it's really important that you now make sure that you've understood all of those questions. I would like you to um, show me that you've GPAed if I haven't been able to mark your questions. So upload your own GPA work to Teams if I wasn't able to correct your work for you. Well done for working your way through this and um, make sure that you understand all of the questions. Bye for now.